Uh, there's a book out that came out in 2018 out of Iceland called Don't Let the Music Die. It's a musical guide through the rollers, the Bay City rollers, that is, their world of music and more. On the line uh, from Iceland, basically, we're going to interview Hannes A. Johnson. And I guess we'll start out like we always do by saying, how are you, Hannes? Hello, I didn't hear you. Oh, I said, uh, joining me from Iceland is Hannes Johnson. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine, Derek. How are you? Your name okay? Uh, yeah, almost. <laughs> it's good enough. Don't worry about it. Okay, uh, well, I first of all, I'm... We're talking about your music, Don't Stop the Music, The Bay City Rollers on Record, which is a right. very a well-researched book. Um, I found out there's a lot of information in there that's not available in other books. Um, how, when did you first become a Bay City Rollers fan and how? Well, uh, uh, I think it was about uh, 1975. Uh, and I heard the music first. I heard it from a cassette. I, I didn't see any pictures of them or anything, and I, I didn't, I didn't know there was any kind of roller menu or anything like that. So I fell in love with love with the music, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, that's how it started for me. Well, we have very similar uh, beginnings because I'm a big fan of the music as well. So I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> How long did it take you to write this book? Well, uh, I actually started uh, more than twenty years ago, but uh, but I gave up after a little little while. But uh, I started again uh, in two thousand seventeen, late something like that, and uh, then after that, it took about a year to finish it. Okay, and you were originally supposed to work on this with Jim Wilson. What happened? Did that fall through? Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, Jim didn't have the time or something like that. I mean, he's a busy, he's a working musician. So, uh, but at the time, I, I was, you know, I had all the time in the world. I, I was kind of recovering from a little something. So, I, I took this uh, as an opportunity to focus on something and, 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 you know, just, yeah, finish it. Can I ask you, how has the feedback been? I know you've told me before that you've went through plenty of abuse. I know how the Bay City <laughs> world can be. So I want to yeah. know, was, was it mostly good or mostly bad uh, as far as the criticism? No, I've only heard good things. Uh, I mean, people probably talk amongst themselves, but uh, nobody has said anything negative to me. Nobody, At least nobody who has read the book. Uh, a a lot of people... Uh, before they read the book, uh, uh, just when they knew about the book, started saying negative things about it. So, I mean, th that doesn't bother me, <laughs> at least not now. Well, you know, I've got quite a few questions here, so I'm going to keep going kind of quickly. I've got uh, a listener named Karen Lee, who's a huge fan, and she has a couple of questions for you. One of them is, what do you know about the horror movie called the night the music died that the Bay City Rollers were working on a soundtrack for at the time. Do you know anything, anything about that? No, I, not really. I just heard that uh, Eric wrote some music for it, and, and uh, I've heard a couple of songs from it. But uh, that's about it. it. It was in the mid-80s sometime, I think. Okay. Um, Phil Wayneman, of course, producer Phil Wayneman, was quoted yeah. as saying that... He was quoted as saying, Faulkner and Wood, did they write any classics? I don't think so. Do you agree, Hannes? About, do you agree that they didn't write any classics? No, 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 no. I don't agree with him. I, I, I spoke to the guy 20 years ago, actually, but uh, uh, and I didn't agree uh, with a lot of things he, he said. But, I mean, if he thinks so, that's fine. I understand, yes. Uh, well, you know, plus, you know, he said a lot of the songs didn't even ever make it yet. You know, Money Honey was number three UK hit, number yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. Plus, mm -hmm. You know, interesting. Exactly, yeah. Okay, um, what do you know about the album that the Bay City Rollers were working on in 1999 as a reunion with a song titled Gossamer Dream? Anything about that? 
No, I, I, I asked Eric about it uh, a few years ago, and and he he said actually, you know, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of stuff they did together. Uh, oh. I think he ha he had a couple of songs demoed, and he brought them to the sessions, but they didn't really work on them. And oh. uh, the, 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 you can see in the one of the documentaries where they are singing uh, "Gossamer's Dream," right? And uh, that was just for the cameras. That that is my understanding, at least. Wow, because there was a rumor that Clem Burke from Blondie was going to play drums. Yeah, yeah, I, I know he played on some of Eric's demos, like uh, the song called Automatic, which is a great song. And Eric told me he wrote that for that reunion, but uh, it only exists as, a, as an Eric demo with Clem Burke playing. It's a great track. Nice. Um... You know, did, I know that you interviewed uh, Tom, Tom Payton, Tam Payton, in your book. Did you feel yeah. that in that interview, did you feel like he was transparent with you? Oh, well, he was. He, it, it was a weird experience, to say the least. I mean, uh, one minute he was very charming and, you know, how are you doing? You, you, blah, blah, blah. But then the next minute, if I said something which he didn't like, if I asked about something he didn't like, he, he turned on me, you know. What, what the hell, what do you, hell do you mean by that? Uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, uh, it was a bit, you know, I, 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 I was just, you know, kind of glad uh, that I was in Japan and he was in Scotland when we spoke. So let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny, man. Um, also, getting into some, some controversy here on the yeah. um, on the Roller Mania radio show, Steve Mack earlier this year, Rollers drummer Derek Longmere claimed that he has played on every Rollers album ever made. That's not true, though, is it? Uh, Derek Longmere claimed he played on every Rollers album ever made. That that's what the, that, that, that's what he said. That's what he said, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know really, but uh, uh, maybe Roland, maybe he played on some songs on Roland, but, uh, and probably all the rest of them. Uh, I don't know, really. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I was told that he did not play on the first album or the breakout album or piece of the action yeah, yeah 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 of course no 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 he, he's not on breakout not at all and also piece of the action like like you say it doesn't sound like him so yeah and you yeah, know uh, george, george spencer was quoted as saying that most of the drums yeah. were sequenced on that album of course i know it's not your favorite um yeah. with very <laughs> little playing from even george on that album apparently yeah, yeah. George told me also also something like that when I I, I uh, messaged him. Interesting. Apparently, and I didn't know this until recently, but most of that album was written by Pat McGlynn and financed by Pat McGlynn. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and yeah, less less than him are, are are you know credited for some of the most of the songs, right? Right. I did talk with him about it, and he says his yeah. wife Janine wrote one song. I think. Yeah, yeah. Wrote a song, and then he yeah. said he put Leslie's name down as a as, because they were buddies. But he said that he oh. did most of the writing, which was interesting. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, by the April 1986 10th anniversary of the first Rollers visit to Japan, <laughs> the Rollers were actually made up of Leslie, Woody, and Pat McGlynn and a drum machine. Do you remember Les at that time, Les? at that time said that was arguably the best rollers lineup to date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably less hassle. It was kind of a, a bizarre remark, but I thought that was a good, a funny one anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on the brand new Pat McGlynn tribute CD? I know it wasn't out when your book came out, so you didn't get to say anything about it. Do you have any thoughts on that at all? Yeah, I like it. it. It's very versatile. And, and uh, actually, it made me, you know, I haven't listened to those uh, original records in, uh, you know, since I wrote the book. And it made me, you know, go back to them a little bit, especially the first one. And I really like that one. It, it's kind of really good, solid teen pop album. 
So, oh, yeah. and but uh, some of the newer stuff w was great, like like the song you did with him, you know, your song. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that, and I'm sure Pat will too. Um, ah. Do you have um, any information about the band that Les and Pat put together called Bad Reputation years ago? I've only heard about it, but I don't know anything else than that. Okay, that was another question that I think uh, Karen Lee had sent over, so I thought I'd better ask. Um, yeah. Here's another controversial one for you. Why did you say in your book uh, the Bachelor of Hearts album with Ian Mitchell only featured Pat McGlynn and name only? Because that's what I heard. I, I heard he only joined them, uh, you know, after after the album was recorded, and right. then he or then he went to Japan with them to tour. That's that's what I heard. Okay, because I did ask Pat about that, and he definitely okay. did not, he says he definitely played on the entire album. Oh, okay, so I heard wrong. I I don't remember who told me that, Les or or, or somebody else. I don't. No, I mean, sorry, I heard it from Ian or somebody else, but uh, I'm I'm not sure. But uh, okay, so I will correct that <laughs> later. Yeah, and, and I bring it up. I, I figured you probably had an interview with Ian. I was going to say, I bet you he must have interviewed Ian or something. Well, uh, no, I did. Uh, I was supposed to interview Ian about 20 years ago. And and I could, uh, uh, but that never that never happened. But uh, I, I was able to ask him a couple of questions uh, via, you know, uh, what was it, Yahoo Messenger or something like that. Okay, I understand. And actually, um, it was, actually, it was him to uh, who got me in touch with uh, Tom Payton. So, you know. Okay. Um, let's see. I have a question for you. There, since you, what year did you get to meet or talk with Eric? I saw the photo of you with Eric Faulkner. What year was that taken? Uh, I met him a few times. Uh, Probably the photo you saw. Where was that? On on Facebook or something? Yes. Probably 2013, something like that. 14. You know, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding um, Eric's marital status. Do you have any? Can you shed any light on whether he's married oh. or has any children at all? He has a couple of kids, right? But uh, he, I think he's divorced from. Uh, Cass, who used to be in the band, but I don't know if he's married or, or living with somebody or, or whatever now. He's very private, as you know. Yes, I do. Um, I'm wondering, were you ever able to acquire a copy of the Love in the World 7-inch uh, record, the, that 1985 rarity from Switzerland? Yes, I'm, I think I'm one of uh, five people in the world who have, who have that, I think. <laughs> Wow, so there was only a few of those pressed, right? Yeah, it was. I couldn't believe it. I, I found it on eBay maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And, and I just snapped it up just like that and didn't tell anybody about it until later. <laughs> Interesting. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I would love to get my hands on that. So you are lucky to have that one, man. <laughs> I believe that was written by Pat, Pat and Leslie, right? Yeah, Love in the World was Pat, was a Pat and Leslie song, but uh, It's For You, it, it's an Eric Eric Faulkner song. Okay, I understand. Um, I have a few more questions for you. Um, after years of research, you know, myself, I know you've done years of research yourself as well and being a fan all these years, uh, the stuff with uh, Tam Payton is obviously pretty appalling and I don't really want to go there anymore because there's not much to say about it. But exactly. but I did want to say, and I wanted to touch on um, the fact that um, Derek Longmere was convicted in a court of law. Uh, evidence was presented. He pled guilty uh, yeah. to these charges, of course. What's your take on that? Some people believe he was set up. Some people believe he's probably guilty. Do you have any take on that? Uh, no, not really. I, I, I just, uh, the, the stuff, I, I had to write about it in the book. I, I didn't want to, obviously, but I had to. And and uh, the, the 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 quotes I used uh, 
uh, were mostly from newspaper articles from the time. So I tried to tackle it that way, but uh, I don't really know anything more than you or anybody else about that. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to see what your take was for sure. I know that you said in the book, to be fair, that you were avoiding the gutter at all costs. So that's yeah. you know, that's that's a that's a high frequency thing to do. So I have respect for you for doing that. Um, okay. yep. I personally believe that Peyton, that Peyton was one of many that ripped those guys off. You know, I believe that he drugged them and sexually abused many of those guys. Oh. That he managed a different band, not just the Rollers, but other bands. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's very sad that a lot of folks just seem to brush that off, and I find that kind of disturbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, and and then people despise me for having an, the opinion that I kind of believe some of it. So it's kind of murky waters to even walk in, I guess. Yeah, but but did you read that book uh, when the screaming screaming stops? I did. Yeah, yeah. Simon that was... Simon. Yes, exactly. That that was unbelievable. I, I just, you know, it was so difficult to read that one. But you know, it it sort of, you know, you, I had to do it, and and you know, that sort of, yeah, I I believe most of those things as well. So, yeah, you know, I, and I won't get into it any any more after this statement. But I'll just tell you that after speaking with not only Pat McGlynn but others that were around that scene, some of the stuff I've heard. Definitely never made it to the books yet. <laughs> so that's, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, one day there's gonna be a big movie about this. I think you know. Oh, I wish they would. I wish they would do it. Um, I guess I'll finish with. Um, can you tell me your favorite uh, Bay City Roller album of, of all time? Yeah, well, uh. <laughs> uh I don't play the music that much anymore, but uh, the album I would play if I was going to play some album now uh, would be Vox. I kind of like that one. Which one? Vox. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Vox is a very awesome album. It really is. I love yeah, that. Yeah, Duncan, yeah. the stuff with Duncan was just so different than the stuff with Les, oh, yeah. and I love both oh, periods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for making time. I know you're in Iceland. I'm here in Oregon and our time difference is kind of crazy, but uh, I wish we had more time to talk because I could really talk to you for quite a while about some of these details in your book, which, wow, I think that book is sold out now, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. It came out in 2018 and it's already gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, one day, I don't know, maybe five years from now or something, I will revise it and update it and hopefully get it out there again and co make some corrections like you're correcting me now. So <laughs> that's good. You know what? I want to say uh, thank you on behalf of Pat McGlynn for, you know, for being able to accept that information and, and not call me a liar. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Yeah, I talked to Pat, and he's like, wow, man, I was in the studio. I vividly remember recording that one. I'm like, oh, I'll oh, tell him. Okay, you know? yeah, okay, yeah. But anyway, hey, man, thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the Church of Rock, and I wish nothing but the best for you. Have a great Christmas and a great New Year coming up, uh, my friend. Oh, thank you. Same to you. Okay, I appreciate it, and you have a great one. My friends, it's Hannes A. Johnson. The book is Don't Stop the Music. The Bay City Rollers on record. You are at the almighty Church of Rock.